Well, hello to all of you out there. And I've got to say, uh, especially to the moms and the dads out there that are telling their children that they are at church right now when they're watching television. I've been there for the past two months. I hear you and thank you so much for tuning in. My name is Mandy Frangiliati, and my family and I and my, my husband, Eddie, my daughter, Aliana, and son, Amico, we've been a part of this church for over seven years. And when Father Eric asked me to preach today, I got to tell you, I was excited, but also nervous, and I was pretty terrified, honestly, too. But the moment that I walked into this church, the, more, the moment this service started, I'm like you. I haven't been in God's house. Oh, my gosh. I Literally, I've been bawling my eyes out this entire service. I haven't been in God's house in two months, and I am so excited for us to all be back together again soon because I got to tell you, the power that is coming from this small, socially distanced team that is here is powerful, and um, I'm, what an honor, and I can tell you how grateful I am to be able to be here, and I'm excited for you to go through that too. So I want to start today with a special message to mothers out there. Of course, Happy Mother's Day, and I think Sandy took the words right out of my mouth, but I still want to say them because they're so powerful. While in a literal sense, mothers are life-giving, I know that mothers are also life-giving in a spiritual sense and in an emotional sense. And while this day does have a variety of emotions, and I want to honor all of those emotions, I also encourage you to celebrate all the women in your life today that have given you life in an emotional sense, a spiritual sense, and in a physical sense. So thank you to all of you who continue to bless those around you. And of course, happy Mother's Day to my mom. And a special thank you to Eddie, Eliana, and Amico, who've already made me feel so special with my chocolate-covered strawberries, because that's all I really want in life. And to all of the other women in my life that have brought so much life to me. And of course, God's timing is absolutely perfect as we're entering into the fifth week of Easter in the church calendar, which is all about resurrection. It's all about being reborn, being made new. We are not what we once were. And then there's the reality that we've got a little bit of life going on right now. There's the reality that it is hard to stay and it's hard to walk in faith with everything that's happening around us. One minute we can be feeling great, but whether it's a news briefing, whether it's the reality of what's happening right now, a social media post, a challenge you're facing in your business or work, whatever it is, we are getting pulled back and we are not living where we know that we want to be living. We are not living in faith where we know that God wants us to be living too. So how do we get back there? How do we go from fear to faith? Today, that's what I'm sharing my answer to you, with you today. And the answer is, remember your strength. Now, I feel so often, and maybe you're like me, in order for me to walk in faith, there's just these burdens that I'm facing, and maybe if, if something outside of me changes, then my burdens will be lighter. This weight on my shoulders will be lighter, and then, then I can walk in faith. And perhaps you've tried it too. You, perhaps you've tried and said, well, maybe if I get that job, maybe if my relationship looks like that, maybe if I have this relationship with my kids, maybe if I make enough money, maybe if I eat this, maybe if I drink that, maybe if I travel there, maybe then I can walk in faith. And perhaps you're like me, You've tried that, and you know too that fullness does not come on the other side of those things. Fullness does not come from anything outside of us. Instead, when I say remember your strength, it's about remembering the strength that is already within you. In breaking out the word remember, another way to say it is call to mind. So when I say remember, it's because it's already within you. God's strength is already within you. We just need to call him to mind. We've already been given everything that, we've need, that we need, but at times we've just forgotten it. When we're living and walking in fear, it is just because we have forgotten, we have failed to call to mind what is already within us. We don't have to look outside of us. All we have to do is call his strength to mind so that we can call our strength to mind. And I found the reading of Psalm 31 today to be such a relatable and a heartfelt struggle as 
David is going through this sturdy trust in the Lord to calling out, having challenges, facing, facing challenges with Saul, facing challenges with his son, and then back again to this sturdy faith in the Lord, remembering the way that God has worked and will continue to work in his life. And as he went back and forth, I felt my heart pouring out because while I can't totally relate, namely no one is trying to kill me, and while my son is rebellious, he's still two and a half years old, but still, I get it. I get the back and forth that we're all feeling constantly in the same way that David does. And because we've all, I don't know about you, but I've gotten such joy out of the memes that has come from quarantine. And I took some liberty on this to make it appropriate, Father Eric. And it says, home isolation has its ups and downs. One minute you're cleaning the baseboards with a Q-tip and the next minute you're watching squirrels out your window. And it, it just brings to reality this, this back and forth and this feeling that while I think it's the case in our lives often, it's especially this, the case for all of us right now. One minute I'm happy, the next minute I'm feeling sad and discontent, then the next minute I'm excited, then I'm frustrated, and then I'm furious, and then I'm happy again. And that back and forth is hard, and that back and forth that we're all facing right now is exhausting. So how do we move through these feelings? How do we move through these feelings and work to walk in faith more than to walk in fear? First, we need to bring our challenges to the light. In verse 9 of Psalm 31, David cries out, Be merciful to me, Lord, for I am in distress. My eyes grow weak with sorrow, my soul and body with grief. My life is consumed by anguish and my years by groaning. My faith, my strength fails because of my affliction and my bones grow weak. Be merciful to me, Lord, for I am in distress. How many of us can say that exact same cry in these past few months? I know that I could. And as we open our hearts, as we bring our challenges to the light, do you know where we take them out of? The dark. And if you are a part of the women's Bible study here, um, our Monday morning Bible study, I hope you know where I'm going with this. And we reflected on 1 fir- on John 1, verse 5. This is the message we have heard from him and declare to you, God is light, in him there is no darkness at all. If we claim to have fellowship with him and yet walk in darkness, we lie and we do not live out the truth. But if we walk in light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from all sin. And here's what the key to this is. If we keep what we're feeling in the dark, either by avoiding it or by denying it, we are not able to walk in truth. If you feel frustrated, angry, upset, I don't know, maybe you're snapping at your family. I don't know, maybe you have challenges at work. I want to encourage you and I want to acknowledge you. I want you to acknowledge it. Hand it over to the Lord in prayer. Bring it up with your partner. Share it with a friend. Bring it to the leaders of this church. Whatever it is, bring it to the light. And you might say, I can't bring it to the light. It's too big. I can't bring it to the light. It's too small. It doesn't matter. That's just you comparing how your challenges show up, and that doesn't work. What you are feeling, what you are struggling with is worthy to be brought to the light. I can tell you I just recently learned about this term from Brene Brown called comparative suffering. And it's this idea that we naturally take our pain, our grief, and our challenges, and we compare them to others' pain, grief, and challenges. And if the jury comes back that their challenges are harder or more traumatic than ours, then we subconsciously determine that our feelings aren't worth being felt. And we drown ourselves in gratitude being like, I am so grateful for what I have. But do you know what that does? That pushes them into darkness too. And think about it. We're shoving things into the darkness because we care so much about other people that we feel guilty for bringing our own feelings and our own challenges to the light. I don't know if that's as profound to you as it was profound to me, but we're pushing things into the darkness truly with the best of intentions. A phrase that I heard long ago that has stuck with me is, 
You have to feel it so you can heal it. You have to feel it. You have to bring it to the light so that you can work through it. Dark is dark, light is light. I don't care how it got to the darkness and I don't care what is keeping you from bringing it to the light. But hear me when I say that your feelings and your emotions are worthy of being brought to the light so that we can take the first step in remembering our strength so that we can walk in faith just as David does. Now the second step, which is a piece for me that has been quite a challenge in my healing journey is remove the facades from your challenges. And here's what I mean by this. So often what's actually upsetting us isn't actually the problem. Now in some instances it is, it's pretty clear. That's upsetting you, that's the challenge. But I want to give you an example of how removing the facades has showed up in my life. And I want to preface this example with, um, I haven't really been mirroring Jesus, if you know what I mean, in this season when it comes to my relationship with my husband, my relationship with my kids. I'm not in my best state. And maybe you can relate, but I'm prefacing because this is an example. So my husband, essential Dr. Eddie, goes to work and I'm home with the kids. And at the end of the day, he comes home and he places the keys, which I have lovingly requested for him to place on the key hook. And he puts them on the counter. And I'm like, I, I didn't, let's just say my response was not Jesus-like. And you could say, you could say on the surface, I'm upset at my husband. You could go even a little bit deeper and say, I'm upset that I'm feeling disrespected, but this isn't my first rodeo. I know about all the facades that I put on my challenges and I dug deeper. Now, to understand how I dig deeper, let's pretend that there's a spectrum of zero to 100. And zero is Mandy is in her best state. Call it in Hawaii on a beach with my family. Okay, that's zero. A hundred is I'm seeing red, not, not in a good spot. Okay, so you see the spectrum. So let's say I wake up at around 25, feeling good. And then throughout the day, the kids get in a fight with each other and it goes up to 35. The kids get in a fight with our chickens. That goes up to 35, 45, and slowly they bring, they bring dirt in the house, they're cleaning, I put them in front of the TV, then I feel guilty about screen time, and slowly it's escalating and escalating and escalating, and guess who walks in the door? My essential husband who doesn't put the key on the key hook. And he took me from 95 to 100. Is it fair for me to communicate with him and say, honey, could you please put it on the key hook? Yes. But is that really the bigger challenge in my world? Here's another way to ask it. If I solve the problem of him putting the key on the key hook, is that really the solution? And obviously it's not. And perhaps the problems, the challenges that you are having come to the surface that you're working to bring to the light aren't either. So while this step, isn't, this step isn't always necessary, sometimes your problems are your problems, but in my experience, a lot of times we do have to dig deeper. Take some time as you are bringing your challenges to the light to examine, to really remove the facades or whatever is covering up the challenges that are actually hidden even deeper so that you can bring those to the light too. And it's so important for us to bring our real challenges to the light. It is so important for us to have an open heart to have these things bring to the light because if we don't, it is impossible to walk in faith. When we build our armor around our heart, yes, we are keeping everything in darkness and it feels safe. We feel like pain can't come in. But when we're doing that, what else can't come in is faith, is joy, and is happiness. So we must prepare our hearts by opening our hearts to be able to see what he has already done for us, the promises he has already made for us, and how he has shown up in our own lives. So our next step is to do exactly that. The third step is to remember his strength. Call his strength to our minds. Now here's what I know from the Bible. Through his death and through Jesus' resurrection, we have been forgiven, we are loved, we are redeemed, we are made new. We know this, and the more that I've learned of the story of Jesus, the more deeply I have felt his strength. 
And now for me, how I've done it is I've, of course, attended church. I've leaned into the community. I have gone, gone to Bible study. I've listened to Father Eric's sermons on repeat. Whatever it takes for you, I can tell you the more that I have learned about Jesus, the more I have sat with the words of the Bible, the more I know his strength. And I can tell you, when I was saved here in this church seven years ago, I didn't know the story of Jesus. So whether you are me not knowing or whether you're, I don't know, Esther here at the church who knows everything, wherever you are in your journey, I just want to encourage you, spend more time with the Bible. The more you do, the more I have found God's strength in me. And you may say, Mandy, I get it, I get it, I've read it all, but how do you really know? Well, how do I really know that God's strength is within you? Because you're here today. We have all faced challenges. We have all had times in our lives where we could have cried out, be merciful to me, Lord, for I am in distress. You've had challenges that you thought you would never get out of. You didn't know that tomorrow would come, and here you are. And maybe you're going through something really hard right now, too. You showed up today. You are listening to this. Find the ways that God is working in your life and call those to mind. In verse 21 of Psalm 31, Praise be to the Lord, for he showed me in the wonders of his love when I was in a city under siege. In my alarm, I said, I am cut off from your sight. Yet you heard my cry for your mercy when I called to you for help. Just as David recalls those times where the Lord heard his cries previously in his life, I want you to remember those times. I want you to call to mind those times God has done that for you in your life. And sit back and bask in that strength, in his strength that you know is within you from your own personal experience as well. And our final step, and this is what I'll close with, our final step in moving from fear to faith is remember your strength. And as we remember his strength, that's what allows us to remember our own. Not because it's my strength, not because it's your strength, but because it's his. As we misstep, as we sin, as we encounter challenges, anything that takes us away from walking in faith and slams us into fear, that pushes us into darkness. How beautiful is it that Christ has given us the opportunity every single day to be made new? So just as David is being pulled back and forth from crying for help to having this sturdy faith in the Lord, it's natural for us to go through this process too. We have to go through winter to appreciate summer. And when it is snowing in May, you don't even know the gratitude that I will have for summer this year. But the key is, it's natural to go through the process and there is nothing wrong. We are bound to go back and forth, especially in this time when it, this whiplash is even more a reality for us. But the more that we remember where our strength comes from, the more we can live in faith and not in fear. Every single time we sit with him, where we bring our challenges to the light, challenges that are at their core, challenges that are frustrating, hard, embarrassing, things that we think we will never get out of, when you bring those to the Lord, that's where it all begins. Bring them to the light. Open your heart so that you can feel how the Holy Spirit is working within you, in this very moment, equipping you with all of his strength. He is our strength, and us bringing his strength to mind empowers us to call to mind our own. It empowers us to remember the source of our strength, which is not outside of us. How beautiful is it that we have already been given everything that we need. The Lord's strength is always within you, and it is always within me. And that is how we are able to walk in faith. So I will finish just as Psalm 31 finishes with verse 24. Be strong and take heart, all you who hope in the Lord. Thank you.